Sound all right? Okay, I'm going to start us with our sponsors, and then we'll get to tomorrow for today. Uh, okay, Marvin is on, but he's not at his table. Okay. Uh, the year of learning, Dr. Paul Konigsberg, in memory of his brother, Dr. Sam Konigsberg, Shimon Ruvin ben Leibush, and Ed Goldberg's cousin, Nissen Hara, Nissen ben Fardosa. Paula and Bob Bromberg, in memory of their dear friend, Julian Smith, Yehuda ben Yisrael. Malka Mann, in memory of her family murdered in the Holocaust. Rav Tzvi Hirsch ben Shlomo Yaakov, Sarah Bat Ephraim, Yisrael David ben Rav Tzvi Hirsch, Ephraim ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Adia Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Miriam Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Bessel Bas Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shalom ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Shlomo Yaakov ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch, Moel ben Harav Tzvi Hirsch. Many friends of Dr. Marvin Blush, Moshe Shalom ben Yitzchak Kalevi, friends of Toby Paris, Sarah Tover Bad Yisrael Dov, friends of Malka Levi, Malka Bad Yosef, Friends of Avi Gidler, Avramea ben Shimon, Cheryl Schur, her children and grandchildren, in memory of her uncle, founding member of BRS, Dr. Israel Brook, Yisrael ben Arav Akiva, Marsha Federbush and family, in memory of her husband, Dr. Uriel Paul Federbush, Uriel ben Harav Shimon, the friends of Joe Wolf, in memory of Yosef ben Chaim, Sharon and Fred Lisker, their family and many friends, in memory of her dear mom, Harriet Friedman, Edel Bas Yaakov. A month of learning ending today by Stanley Presser, in memory of his mother, Leah Bas Yehuda, his mother-in-law, Golda Bas Avram, and his wife, Ruchel Mincha Bas Moshe. Uh, also, star um, of Ruth Burian and Judy and Edward Bourne, um, in memory of Ruth and Judy's mother, Hadassah Bat Azriel Zelig for Miriam, and Father Yitzchak ben Yosef Esther, by Jill and Perry Meltzer, in memory of her father, Yaakov ben Yosef, by B. Peiser, in memory of her mother, Rezel Bashamai, and stepfather, Avram Michal ben Shmuel Halevi, by Joshua and Cal Carol Sanborn, in memory of his mother, Chiena Bas Arye Leib, and his father, Shmuel Arye ben Baruch, Mel and Haran Haller, in memory of his mother, Fega Bas Yaakov. A Week of Learning by Charlie Ending Today by Charlie Gelfenstein and Sam and Ramona Levine. In memory of Charlie's wife, Sam and sister, Menucha Sarah Bas Yechiel Michel. By Michael and Judy Paretsky Ending Today. In memory of his brother, Chaim Tzvi Ben Gershon. By Sandy and Barbara Cohen Ending Today. In memory of his brother Chaim Shalom Ayeh ben Eliyahu HaKohen. By Zev Kipperman and Sherry Dobeki, ending today. By Zev's wife and Sherry's mother, Sheva Libi Bas Reb Moshe. Starting today, a week by Sandra and Marty Levine and Brenda and Ed Parver. In memory of Sandra and Brenda's mother, Chaya Hulda Bas Yaakov Leib. And their father, Betzalel ben Avraham Yehuda by the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren of Esther Shepatovsky, in memory of Esther Reva, but Achazan Batsalel, by Sid Peres, in memory of his mother, Yudas Batsvi, and his father, Chaim ben Aaron Kohen. Today of Day of Learning plus Torah Fund, sponsored by Fred and Juharan Lisker, in memory of his mother, Shifra Bas Ephraim, and for tomorrow, by Judy Fuchs, in memory of her mother, Tsipora Badakiva. A day of learning today by Chaya and Saul Minzer, in memory of her mother, Blima Baslipa, by and starting in tomorrow, by Marilyn and Joseph Statfeld, in memory of her mother, Shoshana Rezel Basmeya Shraga, by Jay and Wendy Goldberg, in memory of his mother, Devora Batsvi Hirsch, and by David and Linda Chusid, in memory of his father, Moshe ben Nachman, and by B. Worden, in memory of her mother, Sprinza Bas Baruch. May the Shemas have an Aliyah, Craig Rafia, Velti Yashir, Hashem Matzlia, and the whole B'nai Israel, a good Gaben Shtiar. Amen.
All right. So let's go to today's Gemara. It starts on Sari Amud Aleph, right? However, to pick up and understand what we had, okay? We had, uh, uh, I'm going to start really on the bottom of Pei Tet, three lines from the bottom. Ve'itema Rabbi Yoshia, Efshe yada chaverin bavlai tama dahai milta. Says Rabbi Yosha, it's possible that our Babylonian colleagues know the reason behind the following item, important item. This one consecrated, set aside a lamb for its Pesach. And this one set aside money for a Korban Pesach. Now it could be that it was to be part of the other individuals, or it could be for a different one. Heach hakdesh chal al hakdesh. How is it possible that the money that's consecrated, okay, can be applied to an object that's consecrated? The katani me'ot shebiado chulin. Why? Because our Mishnah teaches, or Brita actually, that the money that it set aside in his hand, is to be considered chul. So we pick up now Amar Abaye. Abaye attempts to give the following explanation. Ilavda okimnan, Rabbi Oshia lahahi b'mamana zona al pisko. Where it, I'm going to say it, Abaye is suggesting that were it not for the fact that this particular brayta was established by Rabbi Hoshia in a situation where an individual registered a woman who is given the title Zona, okay? Not as we understand it in uh, contemporary Hebrew per se as a prostitute, although that's how it's <clears throat> frequently translated, but as a woman who is prohibited to someone by halacha to be married to that individual. Okay. So in theory, we could say it could be a, uh, a Grusha trying to marry a Kohen, okay? Right. Al Pisco. And he interpreted it applying it to this situation. Okay. The Rebbe, he, and he based it on an explanation and a halach and a statement by Rebbe. Have mokimna la lahahi. I, says Abai, would have established the brighter based on the following situation. Bikadoshim kalim, in regards to lesser sacred offerings. Va'aliba the Rabbi Yossi Haglili. And based on the academy, the explanation of Rabbi Yossi Haglili. The Amar who said, Kedoshim Kalim Mamon Baalim Hu, that lesser sanctified uh, offerings are still considered the money or the property of the owners. Aval Pesach, but regarding the Korban Pesach, Lo Mishayer Inish Bamaot, that a person does not let's say, leave over, designate that money, that object through money. Vadai Misha'er Inish. But regarding other offerings, certainly one can, a person can consecrate, dedicate. Demi'ikara. Why? Because originally, Kimafrishlaho, when individuals consecrate and set aside, right? Adata mafrishlaho. That it's on an awareness that that's what they're consecrating those offerings for. Vaha Rebihi. And this is a 
a statement, explanation of Rebbe, and for that reason, since they have designated, <coughs> sorry, they've designated that animal and it's Kadoshim Kalim, so it re, so they retain control, if you will, that therefore the money in his hand is considered chulin, unconsecrated. De Pesach lo meshaher inish. Why is an explanation? Because for the Korban Pesach, one does not designate, okay, and retain control. Let's use that word, okay? Why? Because basically they've signed, they become part of a group registering that that Korban Pesach goes to the group and therefore does no longer belong to that individual. Ubama'ot vaday mashair inish. But in regards to money, okay, that they might give towards a korban, he certainly is that a person, mashair, designates, retains control, okay, of the money. Now, the Gemara picks up on this issue, implying that Abaye would have explained it differently were it not that Rabbi Hoshea had come up with his answer, his situation. Okay? And so Gemara continues. Vahahi, the kamoke la Rabbi Hoshea karebi. And we say, regarding that Mishnah, whereas Rabbi Hoshea had established it according to the view of Rabbi, lo mok. Mina le'ana karebi, says Abai, that I would not have established it according to the view of Rebbe. De Pesach lo mishayer inish, because regarding the Pesach offering, people do not set aside, leave over, consecrate, okay, continue to control, right, the situation. Ubema'ot Meshayar inish, but regarding money, people do set aside, retain. Let's say retain might be a good term here. Okay, control. Why? Demeikara ki mafrish laho. Why? Because when they originally consecrate, set aside the monies, adata dahachi mafrish laho, because it's with the consent, the idea the intention that that's what it's consecrated for. Vaha, and here, leka la'okme karebi yossi, it's not possible to establish it according to Rabbi Yossi. Daha, tane ba, because here he teaches it as follows. Vaha mocher olato ushlamav, that one who sells his uh, burnt offering or his shlamim offering, lo asavalo klom. In other words, if he sells a portion of that to somebody and he gets the money, right? He's saying, Rabbi Yossi, that it's like nothing was done. Vahashta. And now, the okme Rabbi Oshea lahahi. And now that we see that Rabbi Yoshia, okay, defines the situation uh, such that it's where one has registered a woman prohibited in, uh, in a certain uh, relationship marriage by Jewish law vis-a-vis -vis the Korban Pesach. And based on the statement of Rabbi, Shmamina, we learn from this, de severele afilu bepischo meshayar inish. That Rabbi Yoshia must be of the opinion that even in regard to the Korban Pesach, one retains some control, status, etc. Okay? Now, the Gemara asks the following question then. 
my he the Rabbi Yoshia. So what then is the statement, the implication, the meaning of Rabbi Yoshia's view? Titnan, because we have taught in a Mishnah, Natan la muktashim be'etnana, that if one were to give a such a woman, okay, offerings, all right, and remember the word etnana here refers to etnana zona, where the Torah prohibits really giving such uh, offerings as payment, okay, for the woman, okay, and therefore she cannot use that animal for an offering. But if he had paid her money, she could then use that money to buy an animal and use that for an offering. Hare elu mutarim, that this seems to be permitted. Ofot de chulim, namely regarding birds, okay, that could be used since they're unconsecrated. We don't have the same isur regarding birds that we do towards kudshim. Hare elu asurim, and therefore these also should be prohibited. Shahaya badin, because it seems logical based on what we're going to see in a moment. Ma'i mukdashim shahamum poseil bahen, whereas regarding other offerings, where a blemish renders them invalid, ein etnan umechir chal alehen, that in such a case, we say that the payment to a woman or the money for a dog, and that was the other example, the exchange of, the, of a dog's value for the uh, animal's offering. Those cases don't apply with a korban that has a moon. Ofot, bird offerings, she'ein hamum posel bohem, where this issue of a blemish does not invalidate them. A no din, is it not logical? She'ein etnan umachir chal alehen? That likewise, I'm saying, payment to the woman or exchange for a dog does not apply to them. That's a Kalva Homer effort. Talmud Loma. However, the answer is the Torah's text teaches. The call neder for any vow, the rabot et ha'ofot. And therefore, that includes bird offerings. Kalva Homer, how much more so, the mukdashin me'ata, regarding sacred offerings at this point, from now. Namely, ma'ofot she'ein hamum posel bohem, whereas bird offerings that a blemish does not invalidate them, et nan umachir, regarding the payment to the woman and the exchange for a dog, chal alehem, does apply to them. Mukdashin Shahamum posel bohem, sacrifices, offerings, where a, a blemish does invalidate them, a no din, is it not logical then? She'et nan umachir chal alehem, that likewise a, a payment for the woman or exchange for dog is going to apply to them. Talmud Lomar, again the text teaches us the Chol Neder for all vow, Prat Lenador, with the exception of that which was vowed already, namely Elatama the Ketav Rachmana. But rather the reason is because the Torah says Neder, vow, Ha Lav Hachi. Here then, if that's not the case, Hava Amina, I would have said, Mukdashin 
chal isur et nan alehen. I would have said that in regards to offerings, it does apply the prohibition of payment to the woman or right. Vaha ein adam oser davar she'eno shalo. And here we say, right, that a person cannot be prohibited something that doesn't belong to him. So the implication here at this point is that, okay, if he gives her a, a, an animal as payment, okay, it doesn't belong to him, okay, and therefore is it applicable to say that it is a valid offering, but only because of the Torah prohibition do we say it's not. Now, Amar Rabbi Hoshea, and in this case we see, here is where Rabbi Hoshea says, zona al pisko, the Rabbi he, that this is where he applies the situation that one has registered a woman uh, prohibited in marriage by halakha regarding the Korban Pesach and based on the view of Rebbe. Rebbe. Now, my Rebbe, asks the Gemara, on what basis did Rebbe mention, make this statement? Titania is taught in the following brighter. Im ima et habayit mihiot miser based on the part of the Pasuk that says that if the house, let's say, was too small, okay, or there weren't enough people, whatever reason, for there to be a complete animal, okay, for that household for Pesach, right, if that were the case, hechiyuhu mise mechdei achila, if that's the case, then he's saying that the, the uh, life of the animal, okay, is given over primarily for eating. And therefore, the law, mechdei mekach, and not for any purpose of sale. So in other words, the implication of Rebbe is that if people give you money to sort of buy in to your Korban Pesach, okay, they're doing so to be part of the Chabura, all right, and not as a normal, let's say, business purchase. Rabbi Omer, and this is what Rabbi is saying, af michdei mekach, that perhaps also as a business arrangement. She'im ein lo mimaneh acher amo al pischo, that if one does not have uh, somebody else registered with him vis-a-vis -vis the Korban Pesach, va'al chagigato, or also on his chagiga offering, uma'ot shebiado chulin, that therefore that money, okay, that he's paid to be part of those offerings should be considered then chulen, unconsecrated. Sha'al manat came because on that basis, hikdishu Yisrael et pischeyin, that uh, many Israelites were able to sanctify their uh, Korban Pesach. Now, Rava, the Rabbi Zera, regarding the two of them, they say, Chad Amar Be'etzim Litzliato. One suggests perhaps the same kind of understanding can be applied to the wood for the purpose of the roasting. Kuli Alma Lo Plini. Everyone doesn't disagree. The Kevan de Takanta the Pesachu, that that is certainly part of the preparations of Pesach. And therefore, one could, so to speak, buy in to the wood aspect. 
kigufa de Pesach Dami, that therefore it's like being part of buying into the Korban Pesach itself. Kipliga, where do they differ? Bematsa umaroa. In regards to the eating, in other words, pain to be able to eat the matzah and maror that is supposed to be eaten with the korban pesach. Rabbanan savrei ha achila achritehi. The rabbis were of the opinion that the eating of matzah and maror, even though it's said in the Torah. Matzah amaror yochluhu, right? Is a separate aspect. The Rebbe Savar, Kevan de Hechshiro de Pesachu, Rabbi felt of the opinion that since it is part of the, I say, preparation for the Korban Pesach, who? Kegufa de Pesach Dami, that it's similar to the eating of the Korban Pesach itself. Now, the Chad Amar, the Matzah Umaror, Nami Kuli Amalo Plige. And the other, okay, gave a different, he said, no. His view was that Matzah and Maror are together, right, with the Korban Pesach. Everyone is of the opinion that they don't disagree. Dichtiv, why? Because the Pasuk says, Amatzot Mororim Yochluhu, right? Namely, that eating it, the Kevan, the Machir, and the Pesach, Ninhu, since these are preparations along with the Korban Pesach, Kepesach Dami, that they are like the Korban itself. Kipligi, where do they differ? The Kach Bo Chaluk, namely, to purchase a shirt, the kachbo talit, to purchase a cloak. In other words, if somebody gives you money, okay, could you use it for items while appropriate for the holiday, not necessarily directly connected with the aspects of the Korban Pesach? Rabbanan Savre, rabbis of the opinion, Mehayot Mese, since the Pasuk says from the existence of the animal, Amarachmana Hechyul Mese, that the Torah is implying it has to deal with the life of the animal. In other words, only those things directly connected with the Korban. Pesach itself. The Rebbe Savar and Rebbe's of the opinion, Hachaya Atzmecha, Mise, okay, that one to, let's say, enrich one's own life associated with the animal, which would imply, right, that spending money that was given to you to be part of the Chavura could be utilized for, let's say, non-food-related items that are still an aspect of the holiday. Now, Ula Abaye, and as far as, again, Abaye is telling us, Da Amar, he loved Okma Rabbi Yoshia, Lahahi b'mamane zona al pischo, who told us, and the Gemara reminds us, were it not for the fact that Rabbi Yoshia had established this, okay, our Mishnah regarding a situation where one registered a woman who, against Jewish law, having a relationship vis a vis the Korban Pesach, the Rebbe he, and this was based on a view of Rebbe, Hava Mokminan la Bikdoshim Kalim. Abai says, I would have established it, <clears throat> excuse me, regarding lesser offerings, lesser sacred offerings. Va'aliba the Rabbi Yossi Haglili. So we're back to what Abai was saying earlier on the top of the Yamud. 
I would have established it according to the school, the approach of Rabbi Yossi Aglili. The Amar who says, Kedoshim Kalim Mamon Ba'alim Hu. That lesser sacred offerings are still the money, the property of the owners. Aval Pesach Lo Mishayer Inish. But regarding the Korban Pesach, one does not retain, yes. so to speak, uh, and it's controlled, right? Haktani, behedya, but says the Gemara, it's taught explicitly the following: She'almanat came ikdishu Yisrael et pischayim. That based on this, many Israelites were able to sanctify their Pesach offerings. Ema, I would therefore say. She'almanat came, hikdishu Yisrael ma'ot pischeya. That rather phrase the Brita or our Mishnah to say that based on this, okay, many were able to sanctify, and many Israelites were able to sanctify money for the purpose of their Passover offer. And that ends that particular discussion. Okay, our new Gemara, I'm sorry, our new Mishnah, still really deals with the question of who can be included in the Chabura. Okay. Is it simply a matter of, per, of uh, buying in? Is it simply a matter of being registered? Are there people who, because of their physical status, okay? Excluded. Now, let's say they're Tame for some reason, they're a Zav, or they came in contact with a Sheretz, okay? Or even worse, with a, a Mace, okay? What happens to them in their situation? Can they be included, okay, in the Chabura? Now, we do know, and then I'm going to just jump into the Mishnah. We do know that there are situations where, let's say, a person could have been uh, 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 Tame, and then if they're, la if they're only, uh, let's say, an Erev Shemesh situation, that by nightfall they will become Tahor, right? And so if that's the case, and we're talking about the 14th of Nisan, by the time they would need to eat Korban Pesach, they would be tough, right? So can you therefore slaughter the Korban Pesach on behalf of that individual when the slaughtering takes place while the person is still tame? Or take a more ser a serious a situation where the person becomes tame as a result of another kind of case, maybe sherets, all right, or, or mace, okay? And therefore they have to be sprinkled on the third day and on the seventh day. And their seventh day turns out to be the 14th of Nisan. Okay? So these are the kinds of issues. So now we'll jump into the Mishnah. Okay? Matnitin, says our Mishnah. Zav. Right? One who is a Zav had a discharge, Shira'ashte Ra'ayot, he saw two flows, okay? but not the third one. And therefore, says the Mishnah, Shokhtin alav bishvi'i, that one can slaughter the Korban Pesach and include him in the Chabura when it comes out, when the end of his his ziva period ends the seventh day, falls on the 14th. Ra'ah shalosh, if he sees three sightings, shochtin alav b'shmini shalom. Then, okay, if his eighth day falls out on the 14th, you could slaughter and include him. What about a woman? Shomeret yom keneged yom. If she is a situation 
where she's counting one day for another day, right? One can slaughter the animal and include her in the Chavura, right? On her second day. If she sees two days, they can slaughter the animal on her behalf on her third day. But a woman who is clearly a major zava, then we can only slaughter the animal on her behalf when she's finished her seven days and it's the 14th comes out on her eighth day. Gemara. Amar Rav Yehuda Amar Rav. The name of Rav. Shochtin v'zorkin al tevul yom. That it is permissible to slaughter and sprinkle the blood for an individual who is in the status of a tevul yom. Okay, that he's expected to immerse that day or has immersed that day. That, but is waiting till evening. Umechusar Kippuri, or for a person who's in the status of lacking atonement. Namely, let's say he hasn't, he's a, um, a uh, tzara'at, okay? And he has to bring, uh, as part of his purification, he has to bring an offering and he hasn't brought it yet, okay? But it's due, his, he's due to bring that offering on the 14th, okay? To finish his uh, tahara, all right? Well, that happens. I know we'll go as far as we can. Ve'en shochtin v'zorkin al tamei sheretz. But they say that one cannot slaughter or sprinkle the blood on an individual who is tamei sheretz. The Ula Amar, however, Ula says, Af Shochtin Vzorkin al Tame Sheretz, that one may slaughter and sprinkle for somebody who's Tame Sheretz. Namely, La Rav, my Shnat Vuyom. So if that's the case, we have to ask the question, since we saw before that it was Rav Yehuda in the name of Rav that said that the Tamei Sheretz could not. So the question the Gemara is asking, so what, why yes for a Tvul Yom? Dechazei Orta. Why? Because he'll be suitable at night. Tamei Sheretz nami chazei Orta. But it's possible that somebody that's Tamei Sheretz also might be suitable at night. Mechusa. Right? But the Gemara answers, Mechusar Tevila. That Tamei Sheretz, he may be, he's lacking immersion. If that's the case, Tevul Yom Nami Mechusar HaErev Sheretz. But Tevul Yom also is lacking something, namely sundown. Okay? So the Gemara answers, Shim Shami Mela Arva. The sun sets by itself. Okay? There's no act necessary on part of that person. Michusa kapurim nami? But wait a second, we could argue that the one lacking atonement, also it's going to come about. He's got the korban, perhaps, and he's going to bring it. Ha michusa kapara? Shkeno biado? That the one lacking atonement, the nest of birds, that's why I took the example of the mitzora is in his hand. In other words, he's got it, and he's going to bring it. Tamei Sheretz Nami, regarding the person who's Tamei Sheretz also. Harei mikvah lefanav. What? The, the, the mikvah is right there. He knows he's going to go into the mikvah that day. Dilma <coughs> Pasha. Excuse me. Maybe he's going to forget, or he'll make some other sin. If that's the case, then the person lacking atonement, also the same thing, problem could occur. Dilma Pasha. Maybe they might then do some other act that prohibits them. 
Kigong, the Masrin Hula Beit Din. Okay, but maybe it's a situation that they've given the animal over to the court already. Ukita Rav Shemaya, and like the view of Rav Shemaya, the Amar Chazaka, Ein Beit Din Shil Kohanim, Omdim Misham, Ad Shichluma Ot Shebeshel Front. Or maybe we can say, as a solution, like Rabbi Shemaya says, that the, we have a chazaka, a tradition that a beit din of kohanim, okay, they don't just stand around, so to speak, they wait, okay, until all of the money that they can collect from the shofarot are collected. So they're always, in fact, available, and they are quick to act. So if somebody gives them the uh, korban, they're going to be sure to make sure it gets carried out. And as far as Rav goes, it seems from the Torah he considers the person fit. The Rabbanan, who the Gazrubay, but it's the rabbis who made a decree on the person. Alma, and therefore, Amar Rav says, Rav, mitam in echad mehen, basharitz. Okay. It's possible then that one of them could become tame through contact with a sheritz. Halala Rav, midoraita, nami lo chazi. Okay. Okay. Uh, hold on one second. Maybe continue the shia. All right, I'll get you the iPad. Okay. So I'm just going to continue, and then I'm going to have to switch equipment. Okay. Oh. All right. Alma therefore says, Rav, metamim echad mehen b'sheretz. We said one of them could become tummy with a sheretz. Ella the Rav mid'araita nami lo chazi. But maybe for Rav, even by the Torah, the person is not suitable. Why? Because it's written, ish, ish, ki nefesh. And if a person becomes tame as, uh, right, in contact, mi lo askinen shechal shve'it shelo liyot be'erev ha'pesach. Okay, do we not say then that we're involved in a situation, okay, where the person becomes tame sheretz, okay, Eva. Uh, Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to continue in just a second. Okay. I got to switch rooms. Sorry. Ladies are here. Okay. Everybody. Okay. So it says, Ella the Rabbi, do right to Nami Hazig, right? Maybe suitable thing, right? Dechtiv ish ish ki hava tamei lenefesh. So the Gemara continues. Milo askin and shechal shvi ish elo beyod be. Discussing a certain case of the day. I knew much. And that could specifically you know. be a situation of too much shares. Va'amar Rachmana nidche. And according to the Torah, then he should should be put off. Now, in other words, he should wait and then only bring his korban and pesach sheni. Vachitema And if you're going to say 
So what is the situation here? Savala Rabbi Yitzchak. It must be that he's of the same opinion as Rabbi Yitzchak. The Amar a mate mitzvah hayim. That in regards to somebody who's mate, the mitzvah is there. Shechal shvi'i shalahim. Okay, that when the seventh day, their seventh day falls, liyod be'er of Pesach, and it occurs there. Shne'amar, as it says, v'yechul asot ha'pesach b'yom ha'hu. But the Pasuk says that he's not able to do the Pesach on that day. Biom Hahu says the Gemara, he interprets it. Hu de'enan yecholin la'asot. On that <coughs> particular day, he's not able to do it. Aval l'machar yecholin la'asot. Va'amar rachmana nidchu. Okay. Nevertheless, it must be put on. Okay. Now, continue. We're halfway down the armor. Okay. And uh, we'll see how much we can cover. It's not. Therefore, we have a bright that teaches as follows. So our two sightings, Shochtina Lav Bishvi'i. One is permitted to slaughter the offering until today. My love, the low tavil. What does that mean? Is it not that the person has not used? And yet we learn from this Shochtin Vizorkin Altame Sheretz that it seems to be permitted to slaughter and sprinkle for somebody who is even a Tamei Sheretz. Lo, no, says the Gemara. The Tavil, we're talking about somebody who has immersed. I Tavil, my Kamashmala. If he immersed, what is he teaching us then? Ha Kamashmala is coming to teach us. The Afal Gav, the Mechusar HaErev Hashemesh, even though he's still lacking in the setting of the sun, Kamash Malan Ultimately, you can slaughter the animal for his benefit because by the end of the eating, he is Tahu. Achanami, here too, Mistab Rami the Katani Sefer. That seems logical since what was taught at the end, Ra'ash Chalosh Ra'ayot. Shochtina la bishmini, that if he sees three sightings, one can slaughter for him when the, we said the 14th is the eighth day. I amrat bishlema zav shira ashte ra'ayot shochtina la bishmini. If you're going to say that it's acceptable, that for the zav who has seen two sightings, one can slaughter for him on his seventh day, de tavil, that he's already immersed. That was necessary. Why? Because I might have thought to say, that if he saw two sightings on his seventh day, right? he's like a person who is unable to do his act. But if he saw three on the, his eighth day, the mechusar and he's then unable, lacking to do an act, mechusar kapara lo, that therefore is he lacking then in atonement? No, kamash it comes to teach us. The afal gav the mechusar kapara, that even though he may be lacking atonement, Shochtin v'zarkin aliyah. That's part and spring on his behalf. El i'amrat. But if you're going to say ra'ash de ra'ayot b'shvi'i that he saw two sightings on the seventh day, delo tavil, and he had not immersed ra'ash shalosh b'shmini lamali. 
then why do you have to say that if he saw three on the eighth day, why is that even necessary to be said? And therefore, it's necessary to say, if he saw two sightings on the seventh day, and he did not immerse, that he is clearly Tame. Uh, that we can slaughter and sprinkle on his behalf. If he sees three on the, his eighth day, where he immersed on the seventh day, the Kalisha Tuma, that therefore he is, his Tuma is of a weaker variety. Isn't it not all the more so? that we should be able to slaughter and sprinkle on his behalf. Rather, we don't learn from this. That if he saw two sightings on the seventh day, that we saw that we slaughter on his behalf because he had immersed. No, no. No, I would indeed say to you the following, it must be a situation then when he did not immerse and it was necessary then to say the following. It's possible I might have thought to say that while it was the seventh day, he had the ability to improve his situation. Aval Bishmini, but on the eighth day, the Ainbi Adola Kriv Korban, when he's not able to Im improve his situation by bringing an offering, Ema Psha'e Be Kohanim, that maybe this Kohanim would be lax with him. Kamash Malan Kidarav Shemaya, and therefore it comes to teach us what was the view of Rav Shemaya that the Kohanim are not lax in such situations that he can be give, give them the Korban, okay, the carry over. Okay, and what time is it? I don't have a watch here. All right, can I continue? 922. 922, okay. We'll keep running. Okay, v'hazava shochtin v'chulein. Right, and for the theme, right? So what do we say? Tani Tana Kami the Rav Adabar Ahava. The Tana taught before Rav Adabar Ahava the following. Vahazava Shochtin Alea Vishvi'i Tishala. And for the female Zava, one can slaughter the animal on her behalf on her seventh day. Amarle, and they said to him, Zava Vishvi'i Shala, Mi Chazia, a woman in that on her seventh day, is she, is it appropriate? Is she suitable? Even for one who says that it's permissible to slaughter and sprinkle for someone in a status of Tame Sheretz, Tame Sheretz. That applies to somebody who's Tame Sheretz. The chaze la urta. Why? Because they'll be suitable at nightfall. Ha, adamachar demachia. But in this case, she must wait for the next day. Right. Right? Demachia kapara. She must wait for the next day to get her atonement. Lo chazia. And therefore, she's not suitable. Ema bishmini. So I'll say, what about the eighth day? Pshita. Isn't that obvious? Mahu de tema. What then do you want to say? Kevan de mechasra kapara lo. That since she was lacking in atonement, no. Kamash Malan comes to teach us kid Rav Shemaya, like the situation of Rav Shemaya. Now, Rabina Ama, what does Ravina tell us? Nida Tana Kame. That they taught this in regards to a situation of Anida. Vahanida, 
shochetet aleha b'shvi'i, shochtim aleha b'shvi'i, that for a woman that's nida, one can slaughter for, on her behalf on the seventh day. Amarle, and they said to him, nida b'shvi'i michazia, a woman on her seventh, a nida woman on her seventh day, is she really fit, suitable? Afil leman amar. Even if we say that we can slaughter and sprinkle the blood for a tame sheretz that's worthy, it's going to be suitable at night. Okay, a woman regarding the night of the seventh, that's when she immerses. The Avda Ha'erev, Shemesh, Lochazia. And therefore, until the eighth day, when the sun sets, she is not suitable. Ela Eimer, Bashmini. So rather, I would say, do it on the eighth day. Shinta, isn't that obvious? Hashta, right here. Uma Zava, the Mechasra Kapara. Kapara. And here, where the Zava is lacking atonement, shochtin v'zorkina leha b'shmini, we say that we can slaughter and sprinkle on her behalf on the eighth day. Nida, delo mechasra kapara. Okay, whereas the Nida, who's not lacking atonement, tzricha lameymar, it's necessary to say, tzchatina and v'zorkina la. Is it necessary to say that we can slaughter and sprinkle on her behalf. Nida eats tarichale. It was necessary to teach about the nida. Hakamash Malan comes to teach us Bishmini and Bishri'i no. On the eighth day, yes. On the seventh, no. Kedetanya is taught in a brighter. Kol Bayom. Why? Because all of those that are obligated for immersions, their immersion is during the day. Nida violated tvilatan balayla. But a nida and a woman having given birth, their immersion is at night. The Tanya is taught in the Brita, Yechol tehei tovelet mi ba'od yom. It's possible we might have thought that one could have immersed during the day. Talmud Loma, the Torah tells us, Shivat Yamim Tiyebanidata, seven days she will be in her status as a Nida, Tehe Banidata, Kol Shiva, that she will be Nida all seven days, Violetit Itkash Lanida, and one who gave birth, okay, they made the association, the connection with Nida. And so therefore that explains why. For the Nida, it would have to be the eighth day, would have to be the 14th. Otherwise, she would have to put it off till Pesach Shani. Great. And we will stop right there. Great. Okay. Wish everybody a good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Have a good Shabbos, right. everyone. Everybody stay good Shabbos, there. everyone.